And legend has it that Patrick drove the snakes out of Ireland, although in fact, snakes were never there in Ireland. Uh, so the story may be referring to Patrick's expelling uh, the Druidic religion and bringing Christianity to the Emerald Isle. St. Patrick, well, Patrick died on March 17th, AD 460. Notice I put the AD first. And the Catholic Church made that his saint's day. So ever since March 17th, uh, the day after this, this particular iteration of our concert, uh, has been the annual date of St. Patrick's Day. Now, there was the great immigration, you know, of the late 19th, early 20th century, and millions and millions of immigrants, including some of my ancestors, yearning to breathe free. Uh, more than, and now more than 30 million people claim at least some Irish heritage in the United States. And uh, on March 17th each year, Everybody becomes Iris, including Richard Mac McLetterer, Richard O. Letterer, and so on. Uh, <clears throat> and many cities host annual St. Paul, St. Patrick's Day parades in which Iris pride is on display. <clears throat> Emblems of St. Patrick's Day include leprechaun shamrocks and anything green from food to clothing. What I'm wearing is green. It may not come across. You can see Bill looks very green. And actually, so does the shirt and bow tie. But uh, Rich, Rich, you're green with envy, that's for sure. With my that bow tie. Is, uh, ab absolutely. I wish I could <clears throat> match it. Sorry. <clears throat> I'm having a different kind of technical difficulty. But, uh, at any rate, so. re restaurants and bars serve corned beef and cabbage washed down with green beer. The city of Chicago even adds a temporary dye to the Chicago River to turn it green for a day. All right. So, uh, if you're just coming on or if you're just picking up, because I apologize, it was a little late getting all the connections here, but we've got the Bill Shipper Show Tuesday night show with special guest Richard Letterer, author, a language author and, and expert. He calls himself a herbivore. Um, and um, uh, Richard are going to do a show. We've done a number of shows together as Dances with Words, a partnership, uh, doing shows on language, doing shows on the holidays. We did Christmas and 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 um, Halloween, and now we're doing the Irish show. So let's do a few songs. We've got some good old Irish standards, and we got some funny things and some jokes and humor. And first of all, we got a star of the county down. Near Banbridge Town in the county down on the evening last July. Down the pouring green came the sweet Colleen. She smiled as she passed me by. She looked so sweet in her two bare feet. Not to win some. From Bantry Bay down to Derry Cay, from Galway to Dublin Town, no maid I've seen like the fair Colleen that I met in the county down. As she onward sped, I shook my head as I gazed with a feeling rare. And I said, says I, to a passerby, who's the maid with the nut-brown hair? He smiled at me, and with pride, says he, that's the gem of old Ireland's crown. Young Rosie McCann from the banks of the band, she's the star of the county down. From Bantry Bay to Derry Cay, from Galway to Dublin Town, no maid I've seen like the fair Colleen that I met in the county down. At the harvest fair, surely she'll be there, where I'll dress in my Sunday clothes with my hat cocked right and my shoes shone bright for a smile at that nut brown rose. No.
no horse, I'll yoke, no pipe, I'll smoke. The smart to the rust in my plow turns brown, and the smiling bride by my own fireside sits the star of the county down. From Bantry Bay to Gateway Cay, from Galway to Dublin Town, no maid. That seen like the fair Colleen that I met at the county down. She's the star of the county down. There we are. The county down. How do you get down from the county? How do you get down from a goose? Or how do you get down from an elephant? That's that joke. Um, you, you don't get uh, down from an elephant. You, you get, get down. down. Goose. Yeah. You get down from the county in Ireland. And you know, I, I was supposed to sing the song about my hat cocked right, and I forgot to put my hat on. There we go. Hey, uh, Bill, good news. You now, yeah. your image is clear. It, it, it became so during the song. Uh, there may be a very slight um, uh, difference between your lips moving and the sound coming out. I'm just letting you know, but hardly noticeable. And I respectfully suggest because you're going to be doing the singing and look at all those people uh, down to the right who have come and they're coming because they know I won't be singing, Bill. So uh, what I'm suggesting, oh, you're starting to blur a bit, I'm, but that was, uh, uh, what can I say? You Maybe you want to make me small when you're doing your thing. Uh, we were we shared the screen there. If you I'm can. already much shorter than you. Yeah. And I know you've got short jokes lined up, okay? But so I'm not going to make myself, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll change that when we do it. So thank you all for bearing with us and the technical things. Everything was really great until about 15 minutes ahead of time. And then all of a sudden things, everything started to pop apart. I, my microphone's out and, and that, but I think we're coming through. Uh, again, thanks for, for watching everybody. We should be live on Facebook as well as YouTube. So I appreciate you being there. Um, Rich. Good. Yeah. Give, us, give, us a, give us a few uh, riddles here. Well, I'll do the short ones now, okay? Yeah. I was going to do them later, right. and I'll do the other riddles later. Short Although short. what I will say is uh, when I was a kid, why is Ireland the uh, richest country in the world? Because its capital is always Dublin. Uh -huh. And uh, notice two puns there. And uh, we hope that our uh, wonderful uh, audience will be doubling over with laughter with the puns, but I am, uh, well, I used to be six, three and a half. I'm about six, one and Bill's just a little bit shorter than I. So he's given me permission. So I'll do some leprechaun, uh, short jokes. <laughs> Why can't you borrow money from a leprechaun, be leprechaun because they're always a little short. And, uh, what, uh, do you call a leprechaun who works at a diner? Bill, you're welcome to burst in any time. Door, door, uh, door, cook. <laughs> you got it, right. And where would you find a leprechaun in a baseball game? Ah, and uh, what, he plays shortstop. He play? plays shortstop. That's right. Yeah, my you stuck out on that joke, though. And what did the leprechaun say to the elf? Well, how's the weather up there? So we hope we'll be doubling over with a laughter. And Bill, up to you. But um, I have no problem when you're singing becoming just a little squared at there like that. Well, there we go. There we go. Put you down to size. So I wanted to uh, just say yes. hi out there, give some shout outs to say hi to people. Say hi, Candace. And I guess Charlie and, and, and Cooper and Cameron are all there, too. And Portia. Portia. With a real Irish name, I'll shout out to anybody that has an Irish name here tonight. And uh, and and Robert, thanks for for tuning on. And and I think on some other channels we've got Jody, uh, and uh, some I can't see all the uh, all the um, all the names, but hats off to you. Some of the, and I guess on YouTube it comes through with just your username there. But anyway, so I'll send this out to all the Irish ladies there tonight. This uh, Irish got a lot of love songs here. And a lot of songs about pain, about parting and and that. And we'll, we'll get to some of that, too, later. Here we go. Come o'er the hills, my bonny Irish lass. Come o'er the hills to your darling. 
you choose the road of love and I'll make the vow I'll be your true love forever the red is the rose that in yonder garden grows fair is the lily of the valley clear is the water that flows from the boy my love is fairer than any twas down by killarney's green woods we strayed the moon and the stars they were shining the moon shone its rays on her locks of golden hair she swore she'd be my love forever there is the rose that in yonder garden grows there is the lily of the valley clear is the water that flows from morn but my love is fairer than any it's not for the parting that my sister pays not for the grief of my mother tis all for the loss of my bonny irish lass my heart is breaking forever red is the rose that in yonder garden grows there is the lily of the valley clear is the water that flows from the boy but my love is fairer than any is my love is fairer than any <laughs> hey Todd, Todd is ahead of our jokes already. Bill Shipper becomes Bill O'Sale. That's right. Yes. Wow. <laughs> All right. So yeah. All right, what are we picking up on next? We're picking up with hey, another highly organized, highly well organized. Bill, I'm gonna pick up on Candace Cooper uh Lockhart. Hey, you both she writes uh, sound great. How about a duet? I'd, we'd love to do it as a duet, but the uh, elect the uh, Zoom or I don't know whatever the names of these things are won't let us because we'd be out of sync. So uh, we decided, well, let's let the real singer because you see, I have Van Gogh's ear for music, and we figured we'd attract a bigger audience if we told them I wouldn't be singing, but I'll be doing a lot of other stuff. And. I should be switching these these scenes these uh around now. There we go. All right. Tell us some more Irish stuff. Well, Which I'll talk about there? some Irish bulls to err. And by the way, that's the preferred pronunciation, E-R-R. -R. To err is human, to share humor, bovine. So I'm going to throw some bull, and not just any kind of bull, but an Irish bull. In fact, a whole I'll round up a whole herd of Irish bulls. Well, what is an Irish bull? I'm glad I asked me that. Uh, some dismiss it as a silly blunder born on the Emerald Isle. Others more dis, uh, describe. Can you hear me? There we go. I, I can hear you. An Irish bull is a statement fueled by a delightful absurdity that sparks forth a memorable truth, such as uh, Oscar Wilde's. And by the way, he was Irish, and they've been using the English language for so long and so beautifully. And he wrote uh, or said, I can resist anything but temptation. So um, you see, it's uh, it sounds like it's a bubble off plum, but it isn't because it is true with us. I know I can uh, uh, resist anything but temptation. So starting with some Irish examples, uh, and uh, by the way, any of this, or anything else, but any of this Irish stuff or anything you need, just email me at Richard H. Letterer, L-E-D-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R. And Bill, you I don't know if you'll have those up at the end, but Richard H. Letterer, L-E-D-E-R-E-R, -E -E -R, um, and uh, no dot there, at gmail.com. I'll send you whatever you want with 24 to 48 hours. 
So uh, you'll see what I mean with these Irish bulls. And again, that's one of uh, four or five areas of the Irish I'll send you. An Irishman is never at peace uh, except when he's fighting. An Irishman will die before letting himself be buried outside of Ireland. I give my right arm to be ambidextrous. I love that one. Thank God I'm an atheist. I wish I could do the brogue that Bill does, but I can't. So I'm not going to try. God bless the oh, Holy God. Trinity. Uh, go for brogue, Bill. But um, <laughs> God bless the Holy Trinity. May you never live to see your wife a widow. Uh, all of that kind of thing. And then some of the best Irish bulls are corn-fed American Irish bulls. Uh, reputedly, Harry S. Truman, always be sincere, even if you have to fake it. Um, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I think that gay marriages are something that should be between a man and a woman. Hmm. Uh, Donald Rumsfeld, then Secretary of Defense. There are knowns. These are things that we what that we know. There are unknown unknow unknowns. That is to say, there are things that we know we don't know, but there are also unknown unknowns. The there are things we don't know we don't know. So I didn't I, know that. And and <laughs> and Joe Biden when he was vice president, um, and I think uh, at the what Anita Hill, uh, you know that that hearing for Clarence Thomas. We have two incredibly credible witnesses, he said here. Um, okay. and, and, and then he said, um, uh, that's the most unheard of thing I've ever heard of. I think at the same one. Yogi mm -hmm. Berra, of course, there are hundreds. I like always go to other people's funerals. Otherwise, they won't come to yours. Groucho Marx, please accept my resignation. I don't want to belong to any club that will have me as a member. Woody Allen, it's not that I'm afraid to die. I just don't want to be there when it happens. <laughs> and Samuel Goldwyn, anyone who goes to a psychiatrist ought to, ought to have his head examined. Uh, for the complete collection, if you ask specifically, richardhletter at gmail.com, I will be so very pleased to wing it to you. All right, and uh, uh, Stanley's uh, Stanley Corner is adding a, a new one for us. Stanley's a regular here on the on the Bill Shipper Show. Lying Thank is my you. only lying is my only voice. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Thank you, Stanley, for being right. regular. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At my so, uh, age. To be irregular, so thank you, Stanley, for being regular. All right, and thanks. And, and we've got the uh, your your email address is in the chat now. And for those just joining, we've got as a special guest on the Bill Shipper Show, we have Richard Letter, Richard H. Letterer, language expert, verbivore, and um, uh, columnist, and author, and general funny guy, and that we that we normally do sing together, and uh, on our shows when we're live. And now, since we're not live, we're we're dead. I mean. Well, we're online. Uh, we're not. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. But uh, we're not going to be singing together because it wouldn't. Uh, it wouldn't. Uh, it would take everything but the kitchen sink. It wouldn't be sink. Yeah, I was thinking of that also, Bill. Don't forget to blow yourself up, and you know what I mean. As you're oh, nervous. okay. Yes, yeah. You don't mean blow my nose, right? I got that. If I need to blow my nose, though, I do have my uh, my uh, St. Patrick's Day. He blew himself up, and because he's such an explosive entertainer. Okay, dynamite, speaking dynamite, of, Bill. Speaking of bulls and little and funny and Irish things, this is one of my favorite uh, Irish comedy songs, fairly recent, by Pat Cooksey. Dear sir, I write this note to inform you of my plight, and at the time of writing, I'm not a pretty sight. My body is all black and blue, my face all deathly gray. I write this note to tell why Patty's not at work today. While working on the 14th floor, some bricks I had to clear. And to throw them down from off the top seemed quite a good idea. But the foreman wasn't very pleased. He was an awful sod. He said I had to cart them down me ladder in me hut. Well, clearing all those bricks be hand by hand, it seemed so very slow. So I hoisted up a barrel and secured the rope below. But in me haste to do the job, I was too blind to see that a barrel full of building brick bricks is heavier than me. 
So when I had untied the rope, the barrel fell like lead. And clinging to the tightly to the rope, I started up instead. I took off like a rocket, and to my dismay, I found that halfway up, I met the bloody barrel coming down. <laughs> well, the barrel broke my shoulder as to the ground it sped. And when I reached the top, I banged a pulley with me head. I held on tight, though numb with shock from this almighty blow. And the barrel spilled out half its load, 14 floors below. Now, when those building bricks fell from the barrel to the floor, I then outweighed the barrel, so I started down once more. I held on tightly to the rope as I, I flew to the ground and landed on those building bricks that were scattered on the ground. Now, as I lay there on the deck, I thought I'd pass the worst. But when the barrel reached the top, that's when the bottom burst. A shower of bricks came down on me. I knew I had no hope. In all of this confusion, I let go the bloody rope. The barrel being heavier, it started down once more and landed right on top of me as I lay on the floor. It broke three ribs in my left arm, and I can only say, I hope you'll understand why Patty's not at work today. There you go. That's the reason why I didn't show up at work today, for sure. <laughs> Trying to work the brogue in there. I have to work on that part of it. The brogue and the words and the, and the, and the, the chords at the same time. So uh, I think I'm, uh, it's, it's, this is where I go on in, in, our, in our tightly, tightly rehearsed, very smooth um, routine there. What's next, Rich? I think we've got uh, some names, right? Yeah, what is next is Irish names that's going to involve a few of them on the screen. Uh, are we all set for that, Bill? Boy. You were, well, you, you gonna, or, well, let's not put them up on the With screen. With the way technology's been going tonight, let's leave well enough alone. Right. So, Richard Letterer here. You can uh, reverse the pictures again, Bill. Uh your resident fly by the roof of the mouth, user friendly linguist, wizard of idiom, Attila the pun, Conan the grammarian, the most word struck word besotted word be thumped word a holic you will ever meet, and uh, incorrigible poster uh, that I am. Don't encourage me. Don't encourage him. No. Nope. Uh, I have noticed that some words uh, start with something that sounds like a first name. And then comes the Irish patronymic O apostrophe, meaning son of. And we have patronymics all over. Anybody with S-O-N or almost anyone, Johnson is son of John. Uh, and you, you get the idea. There are so many of those. Uh, and even Jones is son of John. The S is uh, elided there. And in Spanish, Lopez, Sanchez, all those EZs, uh, uh, Gonzalez, Gomez and so on, they are patronymics. So here's what I mean. Uh, you take the plant philodendron. Now notice it starts with Phil, which it sounds like a shortening of Philip. The O is son of, and then dendron, you know, is kind of a last name. So I'm going to share with you about 20 of these. Um, and again, you're welcome to the whole list, anything like this, anything else. Um, and I'll remind Bill, if I may, the gang, that the last thing uh, that we did together, but Bill primarily singing, was for National Grammar Day uh, on March 4th. And one of uh, ours, really, Bill's very best songs, um, uh, Sing Me a Song, Mr. Grammar Man. And I assume that's uh, accessible, Bill, on a link or something. That is yeah. available on BillShipper.com. And while you're there, don't forget to sign up for the mailing list so you never miss an, an event like this. It's on BillShipper.com or on YouTube, the Grammar Man song. You don't want to miss that. Okay, so here are some of the other famous Irish people. The Irish heart surgeon, Angioplasty. The Irish marksman, Rick O'Shea, which has a double one, my favorite. The Irish con artist, Upton O'Good. Up to no good. There's a sound slide there. 
uh, the Irish musician uh, Vi, uh, for Vivian, Vi O'Lynn, the Irish puppeteer Mary O'Nett, the Irish inventor of Halloween, and essentially the Irish invented Halloween, more or less, uh, the Irish inventor of Halloween, Jack O'Lantern, the Irish playwright Melodrama, a little bit of brogue there, the Irish gum specialist Perry O'Donnell, um, the Irish tracer of ancestors Jeannie O'Logical, uh, the Irish vegetable grower Brock O'Lee, Brock O'Lee, uh, the Irish druggist Ben O'Drill, the Irish shipper Bill O'Lading, you see him, the little green guy in the lower right underneath me there. One and of my ancestors there for sure. Absolutely. And the Irish designer for outdoor living, everybody knows that one, Patty O Furniture. So we have another one offered. I don't know if you hit Angie O'Graham. I did. The Irish nurse, the Irish nurse, Angie O'Graham. Oh, Thank oh, you. oh, you're right. No, Angie O'Graham, that would be better than actually than, than Angie O'Plasty, yeah. Mm -hmm. Because Graham is a last name, so that's very good, yeah. Very good. And so I want to give more shout outs for hello. Uh, hello, Zach. Thanks for coming on here. And and uh, Robin also. And by the way, Robin's making a note here about your name, Richard, that it anagrams to Car Herder Idler. Ooh, very nice. I love yeah. <clears throat> who did that again? What was her what's her name? Robin. 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 Uh, very good. Hand. If you love anagrams, Robin, write me and I'll show you my work in Robin uh, in anagrams. Uh, the anagram I have for my name is um, Riddler Reacher. Uh, so great, but I love that you love to do anagrams. Write me about anagrams and palindromes, and I'll send you my work, Robin, on that. Richard H. Letter, gmail.com. Yes, thank you. And actually, Robin put a few of them here uh, uh, Reach, Riddle Air, or Clear Herd Writer. You're going to work there, Robin. I guess I've, I've missed some of these, these extra chats here, there. So Robin from Portland uh, says she met you in Phoenix in 2019. Great. Right. Portland, Portland, Oregon. Is that Portland, Oregon? Um, you know? I, I don't know. She didn't say. So See, that's, a, that's a foregone oh, he, oh, conclusion. He. Foregone conclusion. Because if you put an F at the beginning of Oregon and an E at the end, you get foregone. Foregone. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. My wild Irish rose. Here's the sing along that you can all do at home. The sweetest flower that grows. You may search everywhere, but none can compare with my wild Irish rose. My wild Irish rose, the dearest flower that grows. And someday for my sake, she may let me take the bloom from my wild Irish rose. A song with only one verse there. Whenever you hear, whenever I hear it, it's a song, and then it's a, a, an instrumental, and then they're singing again. But here's a here's one that we do hear a lot. Tip my hat to you while I change to my harmonica. Bill, 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 could you put yourself on the big picture? Because you're performing. Ooh, yes. Ah, <laughs> thank you. We need an, uh, uh, a producing engineer here to be with us. <laughs> In the big picture, you can see my uh, uh, all, all my Irish decorations, I think, and all the decor, including the uh, O'Doul's beer. There, we could, we could uh, see that. So I just uh, went all around there the best I can. Now, here's a song about an Irish maid that may or may not ever have lived. But in this song, she dies. In Dublin's fair city, where the girls are so pretty, I first set my eyes on sweet Molly Malone as she wheeled her wheelbarrow through the streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. Alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. Crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. She was a fishmonger, but sure it was no wonder, for so were her father and mother before. They each wheeled their barrels 
through the streets broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh. Died of a fever, and no one could save her, and that was the end of sweet Molly Malone. But her ghost wheels her barrow through the streets, broad and narrow, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and mussels, alive, alive, oh, alive, alive, oh. Alive, alive, oh, crying cockles and muscles. Alive, alive, oh. There we are. Doesn't that make you feel good, the Molly Malone song? Yeah, beautiful. So, uh, Bill, you know, uh, recently, March 14th, we moved into a state of daylight saving time. In, in every state? In a state of daylight saving time? Well, uh, no, I, Arizona never moves out of it. I think that, the, that's I, why I was late for the program. It was because of daylight savings time, I think. <laughs> right. But I, I don't think I heard you say daylight savings time. I'll give you the benefit of the doubt, although that S may have stood out. And Bill, you got to know your S from a hole in the ground. So the yeah, thing yeah, about yeah. daylight saving time is it's the classic example of what we call the gratuitous S. So it's not number crunching, numbers crunching, it's number crunching. Uh, and it's not in regards to, it's in regard to, and it's a way to go, not a ways to go. And I have other examples, and obviously anybody can write me for that material. Uh, but it is, we do tend to use uh, a Liz, uh, uh, that extra S, and actually daylight saving time doesn't save any daylight. It's still the same amount of time. Well, obviously there's going to be more sunshine, but it doesn't add any. And um, so I know you have a song on everything, and I'll bet you have one bill, O Shipper, Mick Shipper, uh, on daylight saving. Yes, because daylight saving time, and I'm sure I will get it wrong in the songs. I'm so used to doing it. <laughs> daylight saving time always makes me think of Grandpa Jones. Give a shout out there and say hi if you remember Grandpa Jones. And hee haw. Well, for years and years, folks got along with an old grandfather clock or just a common old sundial uh, sitting on a rock. Then the dollar watch had its day and a wristwatch, it was fine. Then along came the man who ruined us all with daylight saving time. I'm hunting the man who first thought up daylight saving time. Until he moved the clocks around, everything was going fine. But I guess he was out of line. I get up, keep it straight. Whom did he hate? I mean the man that first thought up daylight saving time. Now his followers always argue that they've gained an hour of light by moving all the clocks around, but I can't see they're right. The sun still rises just the same and sets just as before. If they'd rise 60 minutes early, maybe they'd have an hour more. So why not leave the clocks alone so folks won't be confused? Let them hit the floor an hour before if it's daylight they choose. And I'm hunting the man who first thought up daylight saving time. If he will prove why the clock should be moved, then I'll admit it's fine. I've twisted my old clock around till it ain't worth a dime. I'm counting sheep, losing sleep. Get up late and miss my date. Couldn't get there in a Cadillac 8. Try as they will, they'll never gain with daylight saving time. Times. Ah, ha, ha, ha. Hey, Bill, one of my favorite cartoons is of Stonehenge, and you're back at the time 
you know, in ancient times, Anglo times, and uh, you see these laborers moving one pillar uh, to an another place and saying, I hate this time of year, daylight saving time. Because uh -huh. <laughs> they got to move it to do it. Well, it's uh, not, not too bad with digital clocks and then the cell phones that get you right. But if you got a, if you got an analog clock. No, I, I hate changing in my car for one, you know, but I actually managed to do it this year. Uh, it's unusual for me. <laughs> all right. So let me see where we go from here with all these pieces of paper I have. I think you've got a couple more riddles. A couple more. Yeah, riddles. Oh, yeah. Uh, some more riddles. My pleasure. Um, so, uh, <clears throat> again, we hope you'll be doubling over with laughter. <clears throat> and I can send anybody the complete set that I have. And just picking up from one of the names, <clears throat> very sorry. What's Irish and sits out on your lawn all summer? Patio furniture, of course. Uh, no <clears throat> sorry, knock, knock. Who's there? Who's there? Yeah, you usually do that, Bill. Uh, it's hard to memorize, I know. Irish? Irish who? I, I wish you a happy St. Patrick's Day. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And then picking up from something before, did you hear about the man who wanted to sound Irish? He decided to go for brogue. First woman, I married an Irishman on St. Patrick's Day. Second woman, oh, really? First woman, no, O'Reilly. <laughs> So uh, we'll quit while we're ahead um, and uh, move on. And uh, thank you for the chance there. Uh, which letter are the most uh, word struck, word besotted, word be thump, wordaholic uh, you will ever meet? And, and just uh, with the worst musical uh, fellow I've ever met and so original, Bill Max Shipper. All right. Hey, so uh, just a clarification on, on we got some questions on the chat about your email address. See, I tried to type it in, and uh, the text is a little small. I thought I typed it right. So, uh, so Patrick, right. we're yes. I'm not sure, Patrick, if this chat is going to survive after the stream. But so um, he says he's not getting through it. But it's Richard, R I C H A R D H L E D E R E R at gmail.com. That's the correct one. So yes, the last name means one who works with leather, as in lederhosen, leder er, the German equivalent of Skinner and Tanner. And Patrick's got a, a wonderful, wonderful last name, Patrick Easter. We, we and speaking of which, I think we're going to do an Easter show, aren't we? In about two weeks, we'll do that Whatever together. Whatever you say, boss. Yeah, yes, let's do that. And our, our Tuesday night show again before Easter comes up, and then the week after that will be National Library Week. Correct. So let's book it. Uh, book book yeah. it to National Library Week. Good. And your volume is pretty good there, too. So we can book that with the volume. I can book the volume, the multi volume set. And Jennifer just posted the email again in the Facebook page. Could you put that in the YouTube again? She did. Okay, wonderful. So that should be it working. So but please. I, I, I love Portia O'Neill. Uh, I, I don't yeah. think my grandmother used to say there are only two kinds of people in the world the Irish and those who wish they were. Marvelous. Uh, and she, her last name, whether by birth or whatever, uh, sounds pretty maybe she's a, a irish maybe she is we'll give her the benefit of the doubt what i actually did talk to portia today and she 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 um she said she 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 got forced into it by marriage no she didn't get forced but she uh she married into it but you know there are a lot of irish stereotypes oh there's the drinking song okay and we're going a little bit more than the regular bill shipper show tonight because we've got special things so thank you all for hanging on because we we've got some uh, definitely some irish stereotypes that we've talked about in some of the songs and, and and i think you've all heard these irish stereotypes and and phrases and there's the irish drinking thing so the guy walks into the bar an irishman walks into a bar and asks the bartender for three shots of whiskey and he drinks three shots of whiskey the bartender pours it one two three and he drinks him down and he leaves and next day, at the same time, right after work, I mean, he must have been working in that building with the bricks, uh, the felon. The, uh, he comes in, ordered three shots, three shots of your best whiskey. And he drinks them again. And the bartender's watching him, and everybody's watching him. And he does that for a few days in a row. And the bartender says, just curious, why, why, why do you always get three shots? He says, well, I have two brothers in Ireland. And when, when I, I drink a shot for them, I feel like I'm, I'm right there with them. You know, they're right there here with me if I drinks. And the bartender said, oh, that's, that's, that's good. 
It's good. So this went on for a few more days, and he came back, came in one day, and he said, bartender, I'll take two shots of your best whiskey. And everybody's, what? what? I, and he said, I, I hope nothing's happened to your brother, one of your brothers in Ireland. He says, no, 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 they're fine. But I'm giving up drinking for Lent. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Bill, make yourself big on the screen. I'm not going to say it again. All, All right. right. All right. You better say it again because I keep forgetting it. Fair there we go. So here we go with it. A song about all the Irish stereotypes and all the Irish drinking. Gather around you lads and lasses, set ye for a while, and hearken to me mournful tale about the Emerald Isle. Let's all raise our glasses high to friends and family gone, and lift our voices in another Irish drinking song. Consumption took me mother and me father got the pox. Me brother drank the whiskey till he wound up in a box. Me other brother in the troubles met with his demise. Me sister has forever closed her smile and Irish eyes. Now everybody's died, so till our tears are dried. We'll drink and drink and drink and drink and then we'll drink some more. We'll dance and sing and fight till the early morning light. And then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up and go drinking once again. Ken was killed in Kill County and care she died in Clare. Tip from Tipperary died out in the derriere. Shannon jumped into the river, Shannon, back in June. Ernie fell into the urn and Tom is in the tomb. Cleanliness is godliness, me Uncle Pat would sing. He broke his neck a slipping on a bar of Irish spring. Oh, Grady, he was 80, though his bride was just a pup. He died upon the honeymoon when she got his Irish up. Oh, everybody's died, so till our tears are dried. We'll drink and drink and drink and drink, and then we'll drink some more. We'll dance and sing and fight till the early morning light. Then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and go drinking once again. Joe Murphy fought with Riley near the cliffs of Alderney. He took out his shellac and stabbed him in the spleen. My crazy uncle Michael thought he was a leprechaun, but in fact he's just a leper and his arms and legs are gone. When Timmy Johnson broke his neck, it was a crying shame. He wasn't really Irish, but he went to Notre Dame. McNamara crossed the street and by a bus was hit. But he was just a Scotsman, so nobody gave a second thought. Now everybody's died, so till our tears are dried. We'll drink and drink and drink and drink, and then we'll drink some more. We'll dance and sing and fight until the early morning light. And then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and go drinking once again. Yeah! Me drunken Uncle Brendan tried to drove, drive home from the bar. The road rose up to meet him when he fell out of the car. Irony was what befell me great-grand-uncle Sam. He choked upon the very last potato in the land. Now everybody's died, so till our tears are dried. We'll drink and drink and drink and drink, and then we'll drink some more. We'll dance and sing and fight until the early morning light. Then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and go drinking once again. Then we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and go drinking once again. Hey, we'll throw up, pass out, wake up, and go drinking once again. I don't recommend you once, but that's hey, just um, just make sure that you know that there's a we do have a tip jar posted on there because we that helps cover the expenses of the equipments, the microphones that break, and the hosting, and trying to find the best situation here. So, uh, let's turn it back over to you. And if you're just tuning in, our guest is Richard Letterer, author and language expert, and and uh, verbivore and fun guy, and not, not a mushroom, but a fun guy to be around. <laughs> and you can find him, his things at verbivore.com. And I think I'll try to type that in the chat as we go to a little bit more. Um, yes, yeah, so carnivores uh, consume meat and herbivores, you'd want to aspirate the H, uh, plants and vegetables and verbivores, love eating words, often their own. So, uh, Bill, I know we're coming up on Irish blessings, but do you want to do Danny Boy first? Oh, that's right. Yes, that's right. Uh -huh. And again, big picture. I know I said I wouldn't do that, but come on. This is the quintessential Irish song. Quint for five, essence, 
uh, the Greeks believed there were four uh, elements, earth, air, fire, and water, and the quintessence was the soul. So that's when something is quintessential. Bill, uh, you want to go to the big picture. You just went to the split picture. Bill, sorry. Usually you're the one barking orders, but you want to go to the big picture for you. Thank you. Maybe. You always been a, a big picture. No, fan. I'm the big picture. There we go. <laughs> I'm the You're technical tiny now. Be, a, be a leprechaun and be tiny. Okay. And Jennifer's posting there the web the website for y'all. Ah, oh, Jennifer, thank you. Oh, Danny boy, the pipes, the pipes are calling. From glen to glen, down the mountainside. The summer's gone, and all the roses falling. It's you, it's you must go and I must buy. But come ye back when summer's in the meadow, or when the valley's hushed and white with snow. This I'll be here in sunshine or in shadow. Oh, Danny boy, oh, Danny boy. I love you so. But when you come and all the flowers are dying, if I am dead as dead I well may be, you'll come and find the place where I am lying and kneel and say an Ave prayer for me. And I shall hear the soft you tread above me, and though my grave will warm and sweeter be, for you will bend and tell me that you love me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me, and I shall sleep in peace until you come to me. Here we go. Beautiful. Such a feeling for it. Yeah. And you see that note uh, from uh, John Madigan. Oh, what a great last name. Danny Boy always reminds me of my uh, grandfather's funeral. It's just mm. that friendship and all. Um, a good lead into uh, Irish blessings, if you would like, uh, boss. Bill. Yes, yes, I yeah. think so. I think so. I think we, we we're just about winding down here. So yeah. do some blessings for us, and then we'll do a final. Hey, song. Bill, we're winding down and winding up. Of course, we are winding you, up. Yeah, yes. it's like you wind up your watch to start it. You wind up a concert. In about an hour and a half. Just kidding. We're getting to the end. As long as you're not asking me to stand down on my stand-up jokes. <laughs> I get you right. Uh, by the way, I've done work in that area too. They're called kind of contronymic expressions, and anything you want, I will send you. Uh, if, if I've, you know, if I've done work on it. Okay. Uh, the Irish are not are known not only for St. Patrick's Day, but also for the lyricism and sentiments of their toasts, which are often called blessings. Uh, across the Irish countryside and throughout Irish folklore, countless toasts and blessings sing of life and hope. And on the breastplate, breastplate of St. Patrick himself, we appears, quote, may you be blessed with the strength of heaven, the light of the sun, and the radiance of the moon, the splendor of life, and the speed of lightning, the swiftness of the wind and the depth of the sea, the stability of the earth and the firmness of a rock. So long, uh, I'm so I'm going to share uh, about half of my collection with you. Uh, and of course, the other half is available uh, on um, request, just at the drop of a request. Um, I drink to the enemy of your enemy. Uh, I drink to your coffin, may it be built from the wood of a hundred-year-old oak that I shall plant tomorrow. 
Um, may God grant you many years to live for sure. He must be knowing the earth has angels far too few and heaven is overflowing. May you live to be a hundred years with one extra to repent. May you live to be a hundred and shot by a jealous husband. <laughs> May the hinges of our friendship never grow rusty, sings one Irish blessing. And from their well wishes, the Irish so obviously cherish friendship and love. And both Bill's and one of my favorite Irish blessings is on this. Again, happy to send it to you. I'm a teacher. I'm a compulsive sharer. There are good ships and there are wood ships, the ships that sail the sea. But the best ships are friendships. May they always be. To an Irish bachelor, may you have nicer legs than your own under the table before the new spuds are up. God, that's so <laughs> Irish. Uh, May the roof above you be well thatched and those gather beneath it well matched. May the roof above you never fall in and those gathered beneath it never fall out. Um, may misfortune follow you the rest of your life and never catch up. May you have food and raiment, a soft pillow for your head. May you be 40 years in heaven before the devil knows you're dead. May the saddest day of your future be no worse than the happiest day of your past. Love that. And um, one of uh, probably the most famous uh, and uh, luminous of all of them. And I'll bet you a lot of our audience will know this again. I'm happy to say that may the road rise to meet you. May the wind be always at your back and the sunshine warm on your face. The rain falls soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may God hold you in the hollow of his hand. So I will close with the brief explanation of why we call it a toast. We call it a toast because back in the days of Queen Elizabeth I and William Shakespeare, people, people actually immersed, dunked, whatever, dipped slices of spiced toast, cinnamon, into their tankards of ale to improve the flavor uh, and to uh, remove um, whatever impurities. And you're joining Bill and me, not Bill and I, that would be hypercorrection. It's an object of the uh, verb there. As Bill and all you know, of course, um, I hope you feel it's improved the flavor of your day a bit, of the day before St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and perhaps diminished uh, an impurity or two in your life. So, um, but that is why we call it a toast. And uh, my favorite closing toast, here is champagne to our real friends. Here is real pain to our sham friends. Thank you for being real friends of our glorious, uproarious, notorious, outrageous, courageous, contagious, stupendous, tremendous, end over end this adventure that we call the English language and being a real friend of the Tuesday Bill Shipper were uh, show. And of course the dancing with words series. Love you all. Yes. And we'll, we'll have to put schedule and other dances with words, uh, words, the actual words and grammar. Bill. Uh, Irish eyes are smiling Sure it's like a morning spring In the lilt of Irish laughter You can hear the angels sing When Irish hearts are happy All the world is bright and gay and when Irish eyes are smiling, sure they'll steal your heart away. Our hearts go with you. Thank you all. Thank you all for, for tuning in. Have a good night and a happy St. Patrick's Day. <laughs>